Okay, you can do it. There you go. Hello, hello. Um, can we can we have some flange? The trick is to pull it. Oh. I'm going to meet three incredible people on this journey. These are women who've achieved so much in their lives. And ask them to tell me one thing. What's your one thing for me? The one thing that they think has made them what they are today. Like if you could tell me just one thing. And maybe help me figure out what I want to do going forward. This is my house in LA. I feel like right now where I am is I'm in my mid 30s. I'm trying to figure out where I go next, what I do next, what's the next phase in my life. I guess being getting married really made me think about um, what a next chapter is. What I'm excited about is meeting all of these people that I'm going to meet and asking them what would be the one thing you'd want to tell me. I love Simone Biles. Not just because she's the most decorated athlete, but she's like such a fun packet of energy. Her life before she became an athlete, just it's also interesting. And I think the reason I really wanted to talk to her was, I mean, if she can't inspire you, no one can. This is why you don't mess with me. See, I'm technically best there ever be. Yes, I'm blessed indeed, so don't test me, please. I am Hercules, I unleash the beast. Finally, the sun is out, which is awesome. Beautiful day. Come on, Leela. She's very curious about LA. When did you get in? Just last night. Today's like our day off. Thank you for spending it with me. Yes, of course. What is it, Dai Dai? Come on. Come on. <laughs> you can walk. Making doggy friends in Venice? Yes. Lilo is Simone's little French bulldog, and he's one of, I think, four dogs that she has. This was actually her first big trip since she was a puppy, but she's my emotional support dog, so it was easier to travel with her. Do you see the pigeon? Diana is my little pup. I just read this article somewhere about how she almost has 100,000 followers on Instagram. And now she's like an influencer, apparently. I'm sorry. You're giving me side eye. <laughs> this is why you don't mess with me. See, I'm technically best there ever be. Hey, Leo! <laughs> yeah, I'm excited too. It's them. Look at that guy showing off. I'm gonna have to jump, but you can't jump in heels. Yeah. If you can... <laughs> okay, you can What's do it. <laughs> there you go. Shut. What? Yeah. Hold it! There we go. Whoa! Like, that was... I need something easy. <laughs> what do you do with these? You can just stand on them for balance. Yeah, you have heels on. Girl, if I do this with heels on, that would be amazing. Oh, my goodness. Champion of the world, <laughs> Priyanka Chopra. Okay, <laughs> that's impressive. I'm not good with heels or stairs. I fall off of stairs Me all the too. time. The expectation of always kind of being perfect and stuff. I wanted to actually ask you about that. Yeah. I yeah. feel like that's the hardest part of my career. I don't want to say job because I chose to do it, but I feel like always meeting people's needs every single day, all the time, is probably the hardest thing that I go through. With those kind of expectations and that kind of pressure that you probably deal with every single day, when you fail, mm -hmm. does it crush you? Yes. I feel like if I don't meet their needs, then I failed, even at the Olympics. Right. Everybody wanted me to win six golds or this or that, and I didn't meet those needs. And I was really down on myself, especially after the beam, even though I still meddled. Right. And everyone was like, well, what the heck is a bronze? And it's like, what? After yeah. After won four golds? Yeah, they weren't satisfied. But it's four inches wide. It's like, it's scary. Yeah. 
What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't even sit on it without being scared. Yeah. It's insane. The stakes with you are insanely high. Mm -hmm. What is the best way of dealing with pressure? Pressure that people put on you, pressure that you put on yourself, just... Therapy, that's... Therapy is everything. I feel like nowadays, if you say you're going to therapy, nobody questions it anymore. Right. But before, if I said I'm going to therapy, like, are you going to cuckoo doctor? Like, are you mad? Exactly. And I think that's why therapy today is so important, and it needs to be more normalized. I'm still going through things in everyday life that I still have to go to therapy for. Um, like, if you don't mind, what kind of things? And it all comes back to my childhood and everything that's happened to me being like sexually abused and all of that stuff. Everybody knows about Larry Nasser and what happened with him. If I may ask, it's not too intrusive. Yeah. When did you know that you were abused? Because you were so young. There was a time I asked my friend and I called her and I asked her the definition of sexually abused. Right. Because you know, some of my other friends, they had had it worse than me. And they're like, no, if he did this, and I told her, she said, if he did that and that, you've been sexually abused. And you know, I kind of brushed it off, and I was like, no, I'm not willing to put that out there for the world to see. They're not gonna see me as Simone the gymnast. They're gonna see Simone as a sexual abuse survivor. And so I denied it, and I buried it, and I was very depressed. I, like, never left my room. I was sleeping all the time. And I told, like, one of my lawyers, I said, I sleep all the time because it's the closest thing to death. What did you tell? I told my mom first. I had just read the story about my friend coming out and I was bawling and I called my mom and then I told her. And then we had like detectives come and stuff like that and that was the moment I realized. Like the gravity of it hit yeah. you at that time. Yeah. Gosh, man, yeah. that's terrible. It's okay. It's, 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 yeah, it's a lot better than awful. Yeah, so it wasn't easy, but I feel like I'm a stronger woman today, and I feel like telling my story has helped younger girls. So much. Do you ever feel like a role model? I feel like yes and no. I try not to let it alter how I behave because I, I want them to always know the real raw Simone. Yeah. I'm a normal 21 year old. Like, yeah. let's just, we're not gonna try to get arrested <laughs> or have any videos on TMZ or anything. <laughs> but you know, we have to live our normal lives. But like, tell me your one piece of advice for me. One piece of advice. Like if you could tell me one thing. I think it's risk taking. If I could say one thing, it's risk taking because Take even risks. in 2018, I took a lot of risk, and I did things that terrified me. Right. It made me realize who I was so as a made, person. So do something that scares you. Yes, always. And that inevitably will teach you to be fearless? Yes, and yourself. You... That is great advice coming from a great woman. <laughs> thank, thank you. So much for hanging out with me. Thank you. We need to go find our dogs as well. I know. We're we probably know. roaming the beach. Come, come. You'll find them. It's such a sensible thing, what you said. Because I have a few fears. Yeah. And I want to, like, face them, and I'll be like, thanks, Simone. This yeah. is how you helped me. Yes. Thank you for being awesome. Of course. Thank you. Want ice cream? Yes. Let's go get some. I love ice cream. <laughs> Career Town. My next conversation is with someone I think is so fascinating to me. Um, she's one of my favorite stars right now. She's a comedian, a rapper, an actor. Play, you a dough raiser. I'm a lead role, you a day player. I got yes, I am going to be talking to Aquafina and I think she's so cool. She was in Ocean's 8, Crazy Rich Asians, which is a movie I enjoyed so much. What's her story? I'm really excited to find out. Why are we here? 
So this is <laughs> pot bing su. It's like this Korean like shaved ice cream. This one is my favorite right here. It looks crazy. How big is it? It's it about giant. the size of a human head. So it's it's huge. Yeah. Um, What's that flavor? What flavor is that? Which one? And the the injo the injo injo injury. It's yeah. like condensed milk. Oh, yes. yeah. You know you like Oh, you like yes. condensed milk? Yes, yes, dude. I love condensed milk. I'm talking oh. to AK. Okay. That is such an Asian thing. No, it's hella Asian. I know. That's like the most Asian thing. We high fived over it. We, we just high fived over it. That's how Asian we are. I love it. It's, it's natural. How rocking has your year been? Oh man, yeah, it's been quite a year, yeah. When you think about going through such like an immense change in your life, you think that it's everything is gonna change, but the truth is is that you just you're the same person, you're just going through different things. I really wish that I could like enjoy it a little bit more. Like my first video dropped in like 2012. So it's been it's been like quite a ride, you know. Oh thank Just you so much. Enjoy. enjoy. So okay, Cheers. thank you. Thank you. Cheers. And also this is like I will let you do the honors. That's that's our baby right there. Oh my gosh. Asian Just culture put right it there. Over there. Just pour it all, Jeez. make it rain condensed milk. Oh yeah. I could have condensed milk from like I could from drink its it. thing. Yeah, I could drink a cereal with condensed milk. I love condensed milk. Like we used to have tubes of condensed milk. I used to, like toothpaste, and I just put it in my mouth, squeeze it out. Oh my God! That's see, that, that's a pro that's problematic. That's, <laughs> that's that's not normal. I mean, that's a true love for condensed milk. Okay, here we go. Dig um, in. All right, so I like to just kind of Jeez shave it up the sides, you know, shave it up the sides. It's good, yo. Amazing. What's your favorite dessert? I like cookies and cream, cookie dough. Oh my God! I once ate an entire roll of cookie dough when I was like eight. And I went to the hospital. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Cause like I know that nothing was wrong with me. Um, but my grandma thought that maybe uh, you know. I, I love know, your grandma, by I the know, way. I know, my grandma's so cute. You she you know about amazing. my grandma? Amazing, yeah. That's right, that's awesome. Grandma Fina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm really close to her, obviously. She raised me. Are you similar to your grandmother? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like how? Just, I, I think, like, kind of eccentric. She's a little, like, you know, I think everyone likes to think that their grandma's hilarious and very unique. But, like, she's just, like, genuinely eccentric. She, like, is, like, very grumpy. Like, she says things about people that are, like, so wrong. Like what? Offensive. She says offensive things. My grandma yes. was so offensive. And they're they're offensive. So offensive. And you find yourself apologizing to them, but then also, like, explaining to them basic human rights concepts, you know? It's like it's <laughs> without, without me tooing my grandma too much. <laughs> uh, you know, she, she's problematic. She's a problematic woman, but uh, hilarious. Very, very funny. You want to FaceTime my grandma? Yeah. Let's call my grandma, yeah. So I do this, like, I FaceTime my grandma at least four or five times a day. Mm -hmm. um, let's see how I look here. Meanwhile, I'm just crushing Hi, this cheesecake. Hi. Hi. Hey, this is Priyanka. Hi, grandma. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How's your day been? Very quiet. I'm watching, I'm watching my iPad all day. What are you watching on your iPad? Because uh, China has a lot of people and lost the kids. Grandma, what kind of dark <laughs> are you watching on, on your iPad? <laughs> Love you, Grandma. Bye. Say bye to Priyanka. Nice, nice talk to a nice video. Nice Thank to meet you, too. All right, bye, Grandma. Bye. bye. She's, She's cute. <laughs> She's super cute. People say, you know, that, you know, people who have the ability to be funny or make people laugh mm -hmm. come from like a place of w being wounded. Yes, or, of course. Like, I that's believe, their way of dealing with it. I believe that to be true. For me, I developed humor as like a defense mechanism. When did you realize that that's what you did? When I was like six or seven years old. Oh, you did? Because I lost my mom very young, so people, when they saw me, they would cry. And I didn't like to be this like emblem of sorrow for people. Yeah. I wanted people to be happy. I wanted them to feel joy. When I'm most uncomfortable and what I've had to do with my whole life is walking into a room and knowing that everyone assumes that I'm a certain person until I prove them wrong. What's the assumption you got the most? Quiet, shy, like fragile, you know, like and then and they hear my voice and they're like, oh, that's weird. But then they, and then they get to know me a little bit more and they're like, okay, well, she's not this girl that needs to be saved. She's not very sensitive. She doesn't you know. need to be protected. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that's, that's important. Were you yeah. shy though as a kid? No, no, not at all. I was, but it's like, that's, the, that's a, an Asian thing. People always assume that you're gonna be shy. The Asian girl is shy. When you're not shy. What's your one thing for me? Actually, my one thing for you is something that my grandma told me, and it's a piece of advice that I live and die by. Life is only a series of ups and downs. When you go up, there's nowhere to go but down, and when you're down, there's nowhere to go but up. 
So there is a kind of balance. And when I think about my career, it's, it's very, very relevant, you know, it makes sense. This is the first day when we arrived. Everyone was only dancing at this wedding. Only dancing. It's scary, man, getting married. But it's a safety net, too. <laughs> no, no, no. I, in fact, initially felt a little bit more stressed about the fact that I, I'm a wife and I have to do everything right. And I think when I. Once we found our groove, I realized that the beauty of being married is you can be completely who you are, and the other person loves you. And that's like, oh, there's a sense of calm. I have a question. What does it say on your phone when your phone comes up and Nick calls? Hmm? Oh, hubby. What's this, hubby? <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm leaving. Thank you. I'm awesome Text me when you're done. You really showed me how to play the game. I am stalking my next conversation. This woman has lived life on her own terms. She's a fashion icon, legendary fashion icon. Just look at these cheekbones, man. This is the seven weeks. She's not what you'd expect. Or she'd be exactly what you'd expect. Diane von Fostenberg is a wild child. It's her world and we're just living in it. Anyone home? I have to welcome you outside. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Can we redo this? I have to welcome her outside. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Right. Welcome you outside. <laughs> I'm so happy you had me. Thank you for taking a weekend to just. No, I'm so hang happy. I mean, we're gonna talk. Oh, sorry, this is for no, you. No, no, that's okay. So this is. Oh, thank you. So I don't know why they put you there. Uh, you know what? I think you need a few pillows there. They put me in. I can take these. Yeah. Can I open this? Of course. Oh, it's a bottle of wine. When I give somebody a present and they don't open, I think it's so rude. Oh. All right, so we put them aside, and can you remove that thing? Yeah, lay it down, thank you. Are we reeling already? Yeah. Your life changed like this, didn't it? At 22, I got married, I started a business, and I had a child. And then I had another child next, the following year. Being married to someone who was so... He was very young, yeah? I yeah. mean, he was my age. So what I'm saying is that we were two children, really, and we'd met yeah, at Yeah, I wanted to ask you, how was that? Like, being in love? Oh, like... and we were playing adults. We were pre pretending we were so old, and we, you know, it was, uh, it was sweet. It was very sweet. Do you feel that it was because you got married really young, the marriage didn't last, or...? I don't know. It was also a time, you know, it was a time. I wanted a man's life and a woman's body. That was my dream. What do you why mean by can, a well, man's Why life? can men go and have affairs and, and women can't? Or they have to feel guilty about it. Why? Did you have affairs? I did. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and I'm very happy I did. Do you feel like you come from privilege all your life? No. Uh, well, yes. I come from privilege because... That's a good question. No one has asked me this question. I like to be the first okay, one to so, ask you questions. All right, so <laughs> I, I... Okay. I think I'm privileged because my father, you know, had made money during the war, so he, we were privileged to some sense. But I think the, my biggest privilege is that I am me. Just taking from that, as women age, as they grow, like, as they get older, like, I'm in my 30s now. Oh, yes, you're very old. And... 
You're so old. <laughs> I just turned 72. I lived 72. So at my age now, I want to use my voice to tell all women that they too can be the women they want to be. They can, because I've never met a woman who's not strong. They don't exist. Women should know that they are strong. Yeah. All right, now I have something that I want to show you. What? Okay, so this was the exhibition I had in L.A. This is the very first wrap dress I made. This oh, is wow. the original What one. year was this? 1974, right there. How amazing is it that you created something that has transcended it's crazy. time for four decades? Believe me, I didn't know it would be that. I mean, everybody said, I made the wrap dress, but truly, the wrap dress made me. Here it is. I have it. The real dress? Yes. And I would love it if you try it. You can give me your comment. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, of course I'll try it. I can wear it with these boots. You like yes, these boots? Yes, yes. They will be perfect okay, cool. for the boots. Cool, cool. Okay. All right, come here. Come here. Perfect. So we sit here and I'm waiting for her to come back. No, no, she, they'll tell you where the mirror. The mirror should go right here, right there. A little bit more to the left. Yes. Yeah. OK. Great. OK, we're ready. Ready, harder. Oh, my god. <laughs> oh, my god. Oh, what do you think? Oh, my life. Wait, OK, so the trick is to pull it. The first time around, to really, really pull it. And then if you do it twice, you don't even need a bow. It will never open. Oh. The cuffs reminded me of Katherine Hepburn, you know, like mm, I love yeah. the cuffs. Yeah. yeah. It has attitude. I love see? that. From our entire conversation so far, I feel like success is something that no matter where in your life you've been, you've somehow managed to reach success. But Wait. what about failures? Wait, that doesn't mean that very often, even today, I wake up and I feel I'm a total loser. So always. even BVF yeah. feels... Yeah, sometimes. you don't always feel on top of the game. Yeah. But life is like that. I mean, you know, life is not like going better, 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 better. It just isn't. You know, life, you go up, you go down. And by the way, sometimes the world thinks you are at the peak, and you know you're not. So this is the appropriate time to actually ask you this. What, what would be your one piece of advice to me? Yeah. Like, if you could you... tell me just one thing. Now? Yeah. What is the thing you would tell me? I have children. To have kids? <laughs> I want to. It's not like I don't want to. No, no, but I mean, that's, that's, okay. The most important relationship in life is the one you have with yourself, period. That's amazing. There's no other advice that is more important than that. Relationship number one is the one you have with yourself. What about okay, relationship fine. number two? Now like with the okay. guy oh, or right. like the girl or whoever okay. your so, partner is? make sure that they love themselves. You know what I mean? I never said this before, so I'm not even sure whether no, it makes fine. sense. That's a... But liking and loving yourself doesn't mean you are so pleased with yourself. It's just owning who you are, you know? And so to help your partner to own who they are and to be the best of who they are is part of the role that you have. I love that. Do you like any of these? Oh, beautiful. I think you'd look good in that. Try if you like the sun in there, you can have them, for example. Do you want me to try it? Yeah. Well, but we don't have to do that in the camera. We could just do it you, you and I alone. I'm gonna go try my new dress. Gotta get up and show I think my friends and family or people who've known me for years um, would say I am a control freak. I think they should say that. That like I like She's I. A control freak. Perfectionist. <laughs> yeah, that's a nicer okay. word. Thank you. That's a nicer word. Okay. I think I'm a control freak because that's the only thing I've ever known. Is if you want to achieve something, if you want to get something, you have to work at it. It's just that mentality, I guess. 
and it's, it's sort of come into my real life as well. It stops me from having fun sometimes. I just feel like oh, I shouldn't do that because it's, it, it's not like it's not right or whatever. So Simone's advice was that do something that scares you. And then Aquafina was like, let's go to K-Town and do karaoke. And I was like, I don't like, karaoke scares me and ding. Are you ready to do something that you hate? No, I don't Are hate you karaoke. Are you terrified of it? I'm terrified. Oh, yeah. you're terrified of it? Well, you can do it. So I don't know it. why I'm so scared of it though. It has like a theme, but I can't really trace Egypt. what exactly it is. Oh, is it mommy? Egyptian? Okay, because I, I couldn't really get that. So I'm terrified of karaoke. I know, I've been twice to okay. karaoke. I eat and drink and sit in the corner and become oh, yeah. invisible. And That's I love it. to watch my friends make idiots of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when the mic there. gets to you, like you're like, no. Oh my God. Okay, we're gonna face that today. Jeez, man, there's so many options. But we only licensed one. Yeah, take one. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. So how, how do you do, do, so you just like. Sleep. What? You just sing it. Like, Did you want to get up on the stage? There's a stage? <laughs> no, there's a stage here. <laughs> I think you should have a little bit of something to just... Let's have a cocktail then. Hello. Oh. Hello. Um, can we can we add some flange? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> oh, it's okay, it's outside, it's outside. okay. Do you want to lead us in? We'll just do it together. Talking away. I don't know what I'm to say, I say it anyway. Today is a day to find you shying away. I'll be coming for your love, okay? <laughs> you can't let me down. I got it. I swear to you, if you told me that there was a score, I would have done better. We got a hundred. How much of an overachieving Asian can you possibly be at that point? Right. We got a hundred. We got a, we, we did, we killed. I'm Lance. I'm supposed to have date night tonight. I wonder what? what? You going on a date like, night? Did you want to bring a tambourine with you? No, it's like a date. Oh, you do it on the hip. Oh, she's good at the tambo. <laughs> Shake your tambourine. Bye. All right. See you never, karaoke. <laughs> See you never. <laughs> I don't hate karaoke, I'm just scared of it. And I think I'm scared of it because it's like I don't have control. <laughs> the one thing that I know, but I think I need help with is not taking myself that seriously. Because you've been doing so much of this with me, I want you to send me videos of not taking yourself too seriously. So hashtag just one thing and send it to me. Um, it's only fair, I did karaoke, it was awful. Mm.